Hello everyone, this is Gorax. Today I am pleased to present my new video format that aims to assist players in starting the journey in Era of Chaos. Once they have decided which faction they wish to play, these videos are specially designed for novice players who have recently begun playing or are contemplating changing their primary team or slowly building a new faction team and require some guidance. My goal is to keep these videos concise yet informative, and I plan to update them annually to ensure that they remain current. This idea has been brewing in my mind for quite some time, and with East Coast spreadsheet, maintaining it will be even more effective. You can find the link to his spreadsheet in the video description. Without further ado, let us begin. If you are contemplating why you should choose Tower as your faction, the answer is straightforward. Tower has consistently been a part of the PvP meta and presently the premium hero Darmev is the best in PvE, especially in the Endless Inferno mode. To optimize the use of Tower faction, it is advisable to pair it with Castle faction utilizing Castle support units such as Sister, Judicator, Seraph, and Paladin, which are quite easily obtainable through the starting events. These units offer excellent utility and high morale, which tower units significantly benefit from. Therefore, if you have already invested in Castle Quadra, obtaining tower units will be a wise decision. On top of that, with first generation premium heroes being available in Dragon League, Astral reigns supreme as a free to play choice. I will start going over formation, possible replacements, and what is next to come in 2023. I will also cover heroes for both free to play and spenders, as well as suggest best emblems. In the end, I will do a summary where I'll explain the pros and the cons of running tower. Regarding the formation, Darmiv's composition is rather inflexible. The primary damage dealers are Arcane Archer paired with Arcane Eagle, as they need each other to reach their maximum potential. Naga is also included in the formation, and while she can be played in both melee and ranged positions, veterans prefer her in ranged. Despite not being the strongest tank, Dragon Golem is essential in the formation due to its domain. Once we have our tower quadra set up, it's time to incorporate support units from the castle faction. The most common formation includes Sister and Judicator in the backline to provide reliable healing sources and immunity to the team. This is followed by the supporting offensive unit Seraph, who supplies buffs and crowd controls the enemy backline. The formation is then rounded off with Paladin as the tank who, despite being behind in technology, reminds one's one of the strongest tanks. For heroes, spenders should prioritize acquiring Darmiv and utilizing the Time Stop Mark spell. To maximize Darmiv's potential, Mysticism, Air Magic and Healing Masteries are recommended. The final mastery should be either Archery or Tactics, with Archery being the preferred option due to future unit upgrades. Free-to-play players should begin with Dragon if possible and gradually acquire Astral from the Dragon League, as it is now possible. By utilizing the earlier mentioned formation, free-to-play players can compete against some second-generation heroes. Masteries for Dragon and Astral should be the same as those for Darmeth, with Mysticism, Air Magic and Healing Masteries being recommended. The final mastery should be either Archery or Tactics. While playing with the Tower faction, it is recommended to use adjutants from different factions for optimal results. The best adjutants are as follows, Adela and Roland, Tazar for healing debuff, or Ezio, as he is one of the best paid adjutants. For free to play players, Korbak and Yog are suitable options to consider. As mentioned earlier, Darsmith formation is relatively inflexible. However, in 1v1 modes such as Arena, you could replace Judicator with Itinerant Priest to have two healers 
ensuring victory even against enemy Alamars. However, keep in mind that this would only work in 1v1 modes as Priest and other healers are needed in your second team in any 3v3 mode. Another option is to use War Giant instead of Paladin, but this will come at a high resource cost that could be better spent on upgrading Paladin in the future. Each unit in the formation has at least two or three sets of emblems that work well for, the, that work well for them. For Naga, the best emblems are Jealousy, but Darkness and Enlightenment can work too, especially for melee Naga. Arcan Archer benefits the most from Jealousy emblems, but Path of Assassin can work if you have a spare set. Arcane Eagle should use Path of Assassin emblems, as the bird deals a lot of AoE backline damage. As a tank with repair mechanic, Dragon Golem should use Gears of Time emblems, but Legals can work as well. Sister can use both Spring of Immortality and Everlasting Secret emblems, but the latter is more in demand for other units. Judicator can use both Everlasting Secret and Path of Assassin emblems, but it may not be necessary to use the latter. Seraph can also use Everlasting Secret or Path of Assassin emblems, but it can be challenging to get spare sets of those emblems. Finally, Paladin can use both Legal and Gears of Time emblems effectively. Now the question is, what can we expect as an upgrade to our formation in 2023? Certainly, one upgrade that we can anticipate for our formation is the Dragon Golem banner. While this upgrade is quite costly, Dragon Golem is a crucial unit in our formation and the investment is definitely worthwhile. Another upgrade we can look forward to is the Paladin's Second Awakening, which will enhance the unit's tanking abilities. It's important to ensure that we have enough resources set aside for this upgrade. The second wave of champions units is still being rolled out, and we know that the Light Dragon is yet to be released. This new unit may potentially replace Seraph, as the cost of maxing out Seraph is much higher than getting a champion unit to 6 star. Other than that, there are no other major upgrades expected for the near future unless Guardian Golem is released as one of the first third wave champions. Let's discuss the pros and cons of running the tower faction. First, let's talk about the pros. Tower Castle has always been in the top meta due to the strong synergy. Darmeth is a goddess in PvE modes, making it easy to gain extra resources. Once you build a core formation, it is easy to predict potential upgrades. Tower Faction boasts amazing damage output. Many veterans choose Tower as the main faction, providing great support within Discord community. Now, let's talk about the cons. The Tower Faction is resource heavy. Alamar will have an upper hand against you. The formation is stale, offering little room for flexibility, which can make it boring to play. The front line is the weakest point, but upgrades are expected in 2023. In the end, Tower is indeed a strong faction with its unique synergy, but it does have some drawbacks like being resource heavy and lacking flexibility information. It's always good to weigh the pros and the cons before deciding on a faction you want to focus on. I hope you enjoyed this format of the video. If you would like to add something, please leave a comment and remember, knowledge is power. Thank you for watching, stay safe, bye!